Welcome. Welcome back. It's Anders. Today we are making five drinks, five equestrian themed cocktails because the Triple Crown is upon us, which is the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness Stakes, and the Belmont Stakes. I'm not a big horse racing guy, but I am a big cocktail guy, and these horse races are closely linked to cocktails. So I thought, let's put together a little list of horsey cocktails. Now all of these drinks have bourbon in them, so this could also be another bourbon cocktail list. We did one a while back, and you could just add these on to those drinks. Go check that out. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more sips, tips, and recipes, and let's go make five horsey-themed drinks. To the bar. Today's video is brought to you by Zbiotics. Zbiotics is the world's first genetically engineered pre-alcohol probiotic. What? That's a mouthful. Let me say it again. Zbiotics is the world's first genetically engineered pre-alcohol probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle those rough mornings that you get after drinking. It's no secret, I love a good cocktail. But I do have to be careful about how much I drink because my body does not bounce back the next morning like it used to. See, what happens is when you drink alcohol, that alcohol converts into a toxic byproduct, gross, and it is that toxic byproduct that is to blame for the rough mornings, more so than dehydration. Zbiotics, on the other hand, produces an enzyme that helps break down that byproduct. Be sure to take it before you start drinking, then drink responsibly, as you always should, and get a good night's sleep. If you are interested in trying this yourself, go to zbiotics.com slash Anders, or you could just use this QR code uh, and use code Anders at checkout for 15% off your first purchase. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you will be refunded, no questions asked. Again, that's zbiotics.com slash Anders, Code Anders for 15% off. As always, drink responsibly. Thank you, Zbiotics. Onto the film. All right, let's get to the drinks. First up, we have the Mint Julep. This is the quintessential horse racing cocktail. It's been around for a long time. In fact, it predates cocktails. Boozy juleps date back to the 1600s. They were seen as medicinal, but it wasn't until 1939 that it became the official drink of the Kentucky Derby. You could build it in a julep cup, but I like to build it in a shaking tin. So if you wanna make it the way that I do, in a shaking tin, start with two ounces of bourbon, add half an ounce of a rich demerara syrup, that's two parts sugar to one part water, and six to eight mint leaves. Drop them right in. Now we can add ice and shake. You don't have to shake this very long, just enough to break up the mint, 10 seconds or so. Set that off to the side and fill a julep cup about three three quarters of the way with crushed ice. Then double strain the cocktail over the crushed ice. This is gonna catch all the mint bits and then top it off with more crushed ice. Oh, lots of crushed ice here. You're gonna make a mess. That's okay. This is, it's a, it's a julep. Then grab a sprig of mint, wake it up, give it a smack, drop it in as the garnish. You can guide it in with a straw. And there we have the mint julep. Cheers. Mm. There it is. Look at that. Look at how nice and icy the metal cup gets. It's very refreshing looking and it's very refreshing tasting. Now there's a good amount of sugar in here, but it's gonna hold up to all the dilution from the crushed ice. So, cheers. Mmm, I haven't had one of these in a while. You get the bold bourbon, you get this nice mellow sweetness of the demerara syrup and mint on the end. You also get mint on the nose because of the big sprig of mint that's right in your face when you go in for a drink. Now we did this on the channel a while back. If you wanna go see an old video of ours, we made this alongside another julep because julep is actually a category of drinks. All right, we've got four more cocktails to hit, so moving right along. Number two, the Preakness. This is my kind of drink. It is a stirred sipper. It's in the vein of a Manhattan. So if you wanna use rye whiskey, you can, but I'm sticking with a bourbon theme for this list. It's much like a Manhattan, but also kind of has a New Orleans feel because there's Benedictine in there. So if you like a Vieux Carré or a La Louisiane, uh, and then it's also very similar to the Bobby Burns. So it's kind of in this family of stirred sipping cocktails and it is named after the Preakness Stakes, which is the second race in the Triple Crown. It's, it's not the official drink of the Preakness Stakes, however, but it is named after it. So let's make it. This one we are gonna stir. So in a mixing glass, let's start with an ounce and a half of bourbon. To that, add three quarters of an ounce of sweet vermouth and quarter of an ounce of Benedictine. Give it a stir, chill and dilute, strain off into a chilled cocktail glass, express some lemon oil across the top. You can give that a garnish if you'd like. I'm going to because it looks pretty. And that is it. It is very simple. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the Preakness. All right, this one I like a lot. Cheers. That one is great. It is very, very similar to a Bobby Burns. The only difference really is the Bobby Burns has a blended scotch as a base and this has bourbon. It also works really well with rye. Now, you, it's stronger, but there's a smooth sweetness to it. I have put bitters in this drink to tamp down that sweetness and it works. It's a little bit more like a Manhattan that way, but I have decided to leave it out because I think that you just need to go with a slightly sweeter cocktail here. It, it works really nice. And that's why I like the expressed lemon oil across the top. It brightens it up. I think it's a winning drink. This should be the official drink of the Preakness Steaks. However, it's not. I probably shouldn't have stirred drinks other official drinks because then you'd get oh. a bunch of crazy drunkards. A really good point. So yeah, you, with, the, with the julep, you get some hydration with all that booze. The Preakness, you don't get that hydration. So it's not good for crowd events. Okay, yeah, this is good if you're gonna sit at home and watch the Preakness Steaks by yourself. All right, but the next one, number three, is the official drink of the Preakness Steaks, the Black Eyed Susan. Uh, the Black Eyed Susan, is referring to the state flower of Maryland, uh, but I don't really like the drink. So here's the deal, 1973. Remember that year, 1973, it became the official drink of the Preakness Steaks. Now, if you've been watching these videos, you might know that in the 70s, cocktails all kind of became this weird morph of, is that the right word, morph? Is it morph? Do you say morph? Is that right? Okay. Anyway, it was this morph of a cocktail that was vodka and orange juice, known as a screwdriver, and various renditions of that. And that's really what the, the Black Eyed Susan is. However, there are a number of different recipes out there. From the recipes that I looked up, all of them seem to have vodka and orange juice because, that's right, it was created in the 70s when all drinks had to have vodka and orange juice. I am going to give this one what I call the Harvey Wallbanger treatment. We are gonna posh this one up. So, in a shaking tin, start with one ounce of bourbon, one ounce of vodka, half an ounce of a peach liqueur, three ounces of orange juice, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, quarter of an ounce of a semi-rich simple syrup. This is one and a half parts sugar to one part water. And then we're gonna do something called a regal shake. Add two swaths of orange peel. Express the oils into the shaking tin and drop the peel right in. This is going to pull out more of the oils and give it a little bitterness from the pith and make that orange really pop. Add ice and shake. Double strain into a chilled Collins glass over ice. The double straining is gonna catch any orange bits. And then we can garnish this with an orange wheel and a cherry in the middle. This resembles the Black Eyed Susan flower, or it's supposed to anyway. And there we have the Black Eyed Susan. Cheers. Official drink of the Preakness Steaks. Ta-da! Cheers. It's pretty nice, actually. The vodka, you could take it or leave it, in my opinion. If you want more of that bourbon, you could just do two ounces of bourbon. You get a little sweetness and a, a nice peach finish, which is really nice and light. It's very refreshing. And the drink, if you've been watching these videos, you might remember a few weeks back, we did the Harvey Wallbanger. It looks identical to this. I did the same garnish. I actually did the same treatment with the Regal Shake because it really does help that orange juice. This is a good one for large crowds and I think you will like it too. On to number four. Let's put the Preakness Steaks behind us and move on to the Belmont Steaks. Number three, the Belmont Jewel. This is the official drink of the Belmont Steaks. This drink, I am not making it as the same way they do at the Belmont Steaks. In fact, this was the official drink in 2011. Prior to that, it was another drink called the Belmont Breeze, and I'm mashing the two up because there are some things that I like about the Belmont Breeze that they left out in the Belmont Jewel, and I'm bringing it back together. There is more to that story, but maybe I'll touch on it a little bit later when I have it in front of me. In a shaking tin, start with one and a half ounces of bourbon, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, half an ounce of a good quality grenadine. I can't emphasize that enough. It has to taste like tart pomegranate. I will leave a recipe down below if you wanna make it yourself. Otherwise, be picky about what grenadine you're buying from stores. Now we can add half an ounce of an Oloroso sherry. If you want, you could add an Amontillado sherry. A semi-dry sherry is what I'm getting at here. Shake that up with ice. And then in a low ball glass, drop in a little bit of ice. Strain this off along with some bubbly water. So it's a little fizzy. To garnish, we can add a sprig of mint, give it a smack, wake it up, drop it on top, and there we have my version of the Belmont Jewel. Cheers. Mm. Mm. 
That's good. See, I think the sherry is very important. That is not in the original Belmont Jewel. So here's a, a real quick uh, what happened with the official drink of the Belmont Steaks. Uh, up until 2011, the official drink was created by Del DeGroff, known as the Belmont Breeze. That drink had sherry in it. And I, if I, I love sherry, but the drink was a little too complicated. There were too many ingredients. So they changed it in 2011 to the Belmont Jewel, which is essentially bourbon, lemonade, and pomegranate juice. That's it. It's something you can throw together really easily. You can serve it to a horde of people and it tastes pretty good. So. I could have done that, but I wanted to bring a few things back from Dale DeGroff's cocktail. Here, I added the grenadine instead of pomegranate juice. And when I said that's really important what grenadine you're using, it is. It has to taste like tart pomegranate. And then the soda water I added to lengthen out the cocktail a little bit. Basically, I'm making lemonade. Lemonade is lemon juice, sugar, and water. So I've got the sugar from the grenadine that also gives us the pomegranate flavor lemon juice, and then the soda water. So technically, I think I'm still within the confines of what this cocktail you know, needs to be. And then I add a little bit of sherry and some mint on top. The sherry's from Dale DeGroff's cocktail. His also had orange juice and cranberry, so it was a different drink, but I did borrow that idea from Dale DeGroff because it's a good one. I know I complicated the lineup with this one, but you don't mind. You don't mind, I don't mind. All right, so that brings us to the finale, the man o war The man o war is not named after some old pirate ship. It's also not named after a jellyfish. It's named after a very famous racehorse from the 1920s. Uh, this racehorse was the great grandfather of Seabiscuit. This is a sour style cocktail that has sweet vermouth in it. That's something you don't see that often. But I tell you what, when I have one, I like it. The Queens Park Hotel Super Cocktail is a prime example of that. So let's make the Man o War. In a shaking tin, start with an ounce and a half of bourbon, add three quarters of an ounce of orange curacao, half an ounce of sweet vermouth, and half an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Now I am also going to add one dash of Angostura bitters. I've got a smaller dasher bottle, so I'm doing two dashes, but if you've got just the regular Ango bottle, you can just do one dash. Shake that up for about 10, 15 seconds or so. Double strain into a chilled cocktail glass, express some lemon oil across the top, and garnish it however you like. I'm gonna do this loop-de-doop thing. All right, and there we have the man o war man o war Cheers. Hmm, it's good. It's a sour style cocktail, obviously but no sugar other than the liqueur and a little bit in the sweet vermouth is added to the drink. It's not syrupy, uh, so balancing it can be a little bit tricky. That's why I went with a curacao as opposed to a triple sec. I know a lot of people use triple sec, which also tastes like orange, but it's drier. And I want that, that added sugar and richness to help with the bright citrus. I like it very much. And there's a little depth to it because of the vermouth. The Angostura, that's my addition. It really is good in there. So, Man o' War. Did you know that the Man o' War, the horse, won, it did not run in 1920, was it? I don't know, 100 years ago, it did not run in the Kentucky Derby at all. It didn't even compete, but it took first in the Preakness Stakes and the Belmont Stakes. And so it ended up winning the Triple Crown. Congratulations, Mr. O'War. So there we are at the end of the list. I hope you enjoyed this. Go get your big hat, enjoy it. If you need a hat, check out uh, the merch. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring. I will see all of you next time. Cheers.